Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Welcome, Mr. Secretary. Uh, over the last three weeks, we've heard a lot of different numbers thrown at us. And uh, the, uh, consistently, the spending numbers have been uh, consistent. But some of the revenue numbers, at least as I see them, have been rather iffy. Uh, the governor is calling for $3 billion for pieces for the unfunded liability. $3 billion to go to pieces for unfunded liability. And he's saying that he's going to pay for that, the $185,000 debt service from the liquor, liquor modernization. However, in the testimony from the Liquor Committee, they, they said that the modernization would only result in $142 million, which is $43 million short. I believe their testimony was referring to fiscal years 15, 16, and 16, 17. Uh, the budget assumptions that I think you're referring to occur in fiscal years 16, 17, and 17, 18. Uh, we wouldn't, in the 15-16 fiscal year, uh, assume any increase in the transfers from the LCB. We assume that they continue to make the $80 million transfer uh, that they've traditionally made over the past several fiscal years, including the current one. Well, let's drill down into those numbers a little more. Okay, so we're saying we're still going to get the $80 million. And in their testimony, they said they actually have another $20 million that we, did, we haven't requested. So I'm going to agree with that and say they have $100 million a year of profit currently. With modernization, we're going to continue to get $100 million for the general fund, or $80 million, but 20 on the side. But I'll use the number $100 million. And we're going to get another $185 million to pay the debt service for the $3 billion in bonds we take out to help resolve the situation with Peacers. So when I look at that, we have an organization that's been in business for 80 years, and at the end of the 80 years, their profit is $100 million a year. And within just a few years, three, four, we're expecting that profit to jump to $285 million, $185 million increase, when they said in their testimony that they expect robust revenue increases of 4% a year with modernization, but we're expecting a 185% increase to 185 million. How is that possible? So to begin with, we're not just talking about profits. The system generates more than $550 million uh, a year in annual receipts to our general fund budget or to pay for services that are provided from those operations. Again, not in the 15-16 fiscal year, beginning in the 16-17 or 16, 17 fiscal year, we think that, that the modernization initiatives that we've recommended uh, will grow those returns to the Commonwealth significantly. Let me just interrupt for a second. Signi by significantly, we're talking about $185 million, $185 million increase over the $80 million we already have. I, I just, they, they need the next Warren Buffett working over there for that to happen. I mean, I just do not, I just do not see that happening. This is also why they told us their revenues are going up 4% and their expenses are going up 6%. That's like saying, I want to, I, I cost me $6 to make a hoagie, I sell it for four and I'm going to make up the difference in volume. It's crazy. We are currently among the 10th largest wholesale purchasers of spirits among the five largest wholesale purchasers of wine. Mr. Chairman, I want to move on because I'm clearly not going to get an answer where the $185 million is coming from. I just have two, two comments because I'm running out of time. I'm down to a minute and five seconds. I set my stopwatch for you, Bill. Uh, I, I, have to, I, have to, I have to mention, follow up on the Chairman. One, I think in this program, first of all, I'm a moderate Republican. As a freshman, I voted for the Rendell tax increase because the money was going to education. So I'm all for education. You know, freshmen don't generally vote for tax increases. But in this budget, what you're forgetting is just because you're a wealthy school district doesn't mean you don't have poor and moderate people living there. In my district, the 168th, Media Borough, I probably have some of the lowest incomes in the Commonwealth. Many of those people are struggling to stay in their homes, struggling to stay in their homes because they want to be in that school district, because it is a good school district. They're, we're going to send a lot more money. I know you're going to tell me that they're, they're going to see whatever in property tax rates. Let me tell you, you talked about Act 1. It's a joke. I voted for it. I'm embarrassed when I go out in public because I told them it would control property taxes. It doesn't. So we're going to rely on that. They're going to get the increase in the sales tax, the most regressive tax on lower moderate people, increase in the PIT, and then we're going to give them a small 
decrease in their property tax, which I am telling you right now, in five years, we'll be right back where it was if we're going to rely on Act 1 to keep the school districts from raising taxes. This is a budget I can't support, even though in the past I have supported. I think I voted on every single education initiative. This is patently unfair to many of the school districts in the Commonwealth, and I think it needs to be completely revisited. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.